Then I spoke to him, he said, no, Rabbi, maybe you're right. The first one was good, all the others are bad. I said, okay, we said, uh, well, somebody's calling, I'm not in Spanish now. So he said, So he said, כי השקר אין לו רגליים וקיום. אחים היו יודעים איזה האמת לא היה שולט בהם הגלות, רק לא היה ניתקן, הכל הרבה מוכרח להיות גלות מצרים. לכן, he couldn't tell them the case. Why couldn't tell them the case? Because the, the end is belongs to you. The end of the, it depends what you want to get. And I will explain it in a, in, in, in a different way. They're coming to Yosef. What they are telling him? Your father asked us before he died. They tell him a whole story. Happened, all happened, I don't know what happened. And then he's telling them, your father told us don't touch, to tell you don't touch us, keep, keep take care of us, take care of us. Yosef is telling them, I don't understand what you want. And he's telling them something. You meant bad, Hashem meant good. Finished. So you understand now what he says over here, and he says that the hester, when people feel that they are in a, in a problem, is that they decided that they want to hide themselves from Hashem. Because if Hashem is with me, what should we be afraid of? And he says over here the follow. ולכן הוא אומר, וכיוון שלא יכול יעקב לגלות את הקץ, לברר להם את האמת מבחינת אספקלריה מהירה, אז הוא הסביר להם בצורה של אספקלריה שלא מהירה. מינינג. השבטים, they felt the galut, and they understood that Yosef can, can help them, and they thought that by, by hating him, Yosef is going to reject them. But Yosef told them, everything is for the best. Thank you for this. Thank you for selling me to the Egyptian. Now, tell me, a regular person says it? No. no. Why? Because in the Galut. But it's a, a, a person really close to Hashem is telling him, you know what? Thank you for this too. He was in the Galut, but he was in the light. This is what Yosef is teaching us. You can be in America. So much darkness around us. But because you really believe in Hashem, and you really believe that whatever Hashem is doing to us is for our benefit, and we take all the bitterness and all the poison from our heart, for you, Moshiach had Broma. Your Mashiach came already. Why? Because you decided that you're going to fight with this lie and with this Yetzara on the other way. Because you are not going to find the problems. You're not going to look for problems. You're not going to look where is my husband wrong and my wife is wrong and, and my children are wrong and my parents are wrong and my, and, and my rabbi is wrong and this is wrong. And I'm not looking for this. Yesterday night, uh, after the tefillah, so a few people come to ask me questions. So somebody said, Rabbi, can I say Lashon Lara about somebody that is not religious, somebody is not Jewish, somebody... I told him, you know, my problem with Lashon Lara is not about whom you're saying it. My problem with Lashon Lara that you get used to talk about it. And if you have this time to talk Lashon Lara, it means you're using your time for nothing. And I don't care if you say Lashon Ara about animal, people, Jews, not Jews, religion, not religion, because it's irrelevant. It's why you're wasting your time on this. <coughs> you know, when there is a, when the kitchen is clean, the flies are not coming. But when the kitchen is dirty, they come to visit. So people that like to all this Lashon Ara and gossip, we call them flies, not human beings. This is talk about the person pri personal problem. He is looking to be in the Galut. And uh, a big rabbi came to America after he left to Israel. I, told, I spoke to him, so what do you say about America? He told me, 
America is a, is a place of blessing. But the people over here, they feel miserable because they want to feel miserable. And, uh, and you know, it makes a lot of sense. We try to destroy our life and to listen to our Yetzirah because we are looking for problems. We are looking for them. And how many bitterness and how many aggravation, frustration we can prevent by not looking like this? Of course, it's not easy, but we have to try. We have to try. ולכן הוא אומר, הוא אומר פה, ויוסף השיב להם על הכל, לטובה פרשבו לרע ואפשר, שעל איזה חשבו לרע נענשו, שהרגישו הגלות רשו, אחד יסתר את דרך שם ולוחש, ועל הטובה לכם אותם רב שהוא תיקון הראוי לבוא על ידי הגלות, כי יוסף היה דבוק בגאולה, ולא הרגיש בגלות. לכן ואיפה כזה בדברה מלאו, כי ראה שהם הרגישו מיד להרגיש הגלות. Again, it's, and, and it's something which you can test yourself. If you are really going to believe that everything is okay, and it's going to be okay, you're going to get it. But if not, not. I tell you a story that I told him a few times, but it's something that when I was a student in yeshiva, we had a teacher, it was a Russian immigrant that came in 1971 to Israel. And uh, once he gave us Sichat Musar, and he told us the follow. He said he was, he was dealing, he was teaching Judaism in Russia, in Moscow, during the time that it was forbidden. And every time they would come and people would, uh, would, uh, would uh, sell him to the government and abused and everything. Once they caught him teaching Torah, and they decided that he has to go to, he found that he's going to jail. He was able to bring food with him. So we took the half a loaf of a bread. Roman, try to concentrate. It's once a week that you are here. He took half a loaf of bread. He emptied the bread. He put his filling, And he put inside the, the rest of the bread. So when he came, he said, I bring the bread, but because I, I eat kosher. So they let him come in. So every night, every morning, when they used to go to make sport, he would stay over there. He would put the, 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 the blanket on him, and he would put fill in, say, Shema Israel, and bring it back, inside the loaf, the bread loaf. Because he has to keep put fill in, even in, in the prison in Moscow, in the in the cellar of the KGB. You have to have a certain, uh, certain quality for this. One of the people say that he is sleeping in the morning and he told, I think he's doing something not kosher. And they made over there, they made over here a trap, an ambush. And when he was putting his fill and they came inside and took the blanket and they saw this Jewish guy in the KGB prison wearing tefillin. It was too much for them. So they decided they have to send him to a, I think it's called Kurt Kertz, how is it called in Russian? No, the, uh, it's a very small cell. Kutsk. Kutsk, huh? Siberia. No, inside. The, the inside the there, there is a place over there, it, they put him over there like a dead person, like a morgue, they put him over there. Me too. They put him inside the cell, he cannot move, he's just sitting like this. And they put and the water coming on his face, and he cannot even scratch his face. And there is all kind of, uh, all kind of guests of mice and rats going to say hello to him. And he cannot move. And he was sitting over there, and suddenly the water comes, and it's, it's scratching, and he wants to, he cannot do nothing. And the mouse and the rat around him, really nice feeling. And he's about to collapse, you know, with... Uh, and then he starts to imagine what would happen if Hashem wants to help him. And he said, he, t he told us, I was thinking that I'm going to, they're going to take me out of there and take me to the, to the office. 
and will tell me, you're allowed to leave the country. And I'm going to go to the... Domadetov, Sharamatov, Sharamatov, the airport. And I'm going to go over there to El Al, going to Israel, or whatever, Lufthansa, whatever is there. And I'm going to go to Yerushalayim. And I'm going to open a yeshiva for Russian speaker in Yerushalayim. And I'm going to be a Rosh Yeshiva and teaching all day and go once a week to the Kotel Amaravi. And it felt so good because all the plan is set. But when he finished this, you know, we see all day, so he was so tired, so eventually he fell asleep. He fell asleep and um, he, he woke in the next morning. They took him out of this cell. They brought him to the KGB office there. And they told him that we were sitting about your case yesterday and we found that you are a lost case. Mm -hmm. We decided to, to send you out of here. The Bukharian system of Nebinam Netsuzam, you know, there is a... Just, you have 24 hours to just disappear from you. <laughs> Uh, he took it as a compliment, of course. And uh, he came home, he told to his wife, Spriesdam, Vidana, let's go. And they left the same, the next, then the late of night, they, they left to come to Israel. And they came to Israel, they went to Yerushalayim, to one of his friends' yeshivot. And they hel helped him to open yeshiva in Yerushalayim. Mm -hmm. And he started to teach Russian people who came from, in the 70s, over there, this, this, this yeshiva. And he used to go once a week to the Kotel. And he told us, and this was in 71, when I was in the Shiva, I was in the, in the 80s. So he told me, it was around 81, 10 years afterwards, he told me, you know what? When I was over there, I was about to, to give up already. You know, he it's, it's, it's say, you cannot do nothing, you feel so bad, you feel so alone, you feel so down that you have to choose either to just, to, you know, to give, to give up. But you know, I told to myself, let's work on myself. And it happened. This is what really Yosef is telling us, and he's telling to the brothers. Why do you think about you sold me or this? Forget about it. Let's make the maximum that we can do now. And it applies to us in our life, in our personal life. If you start to complain the wife or the husband, they say, can you stop complaining? Let's do something. So something productive. What will come from the complaint? I will not change my husband, not change my wife. But let's do something in our life to make it happen. And you are going to see this. It's a wonderful siyata dishmaya. Why? Because you don't let the yetzerara, the sheker, to come to, to, to inside. Because the sheker is telling you the lie, the galut, the marot alayla, that tells you no. What Yaakov is telling, what, what the Hashem is telling to Yaakov in marot alayla? In Egypt, you are going to continue. Why? Because you are so inside the Geula. So for you, this is the redemption. And why we didn't tell his children the kids? There is no need to tell them the kids. Why? Because if you really believe that Hashem is with you, why should you worry? So what is the key? It's not what to know. The key is to believe that Hashem with us. So, we have now a whole week of Avodat Hashem, of Smachot, of Besorot Ovot, and try to take all this negative energy aside and focus on what Hashem is giving us. Baruch Hashem, Hashem is very kind to us. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Rabbi Yechanel Ben Akasha Omer Atzad HaKadosh Baruch Hu Lezakot Sulemaan Sitko Yagdil Torah V'yadir. Amen. Amen. Amen.